A brilliant scientist called Eugen Sanger had an idea for a plane that could travel through space. If you want an example of looking really into the future, then look at the amazing designs of Eugen Sanger. This man had a plan for what he called an antipodal bomber. It could fly to the Antipodes, the other side of the world. Sanger's space bomber was decades ahead of its time. At takeoff, the plane was to be propelled along a monorail by a sled fired by V-2 rockets. After 1.7 miles, the plane would be traveling at over 1,000 miles an hour. As it left the track, a second rocket inside the bomber would alter the plane's trajectory and propel it 90 miles into space. The point about Eugen Sanger's design was that you'd in essence put the plane into an orbit. So you'd burn a lot of fuel to get it up there, but once it was on the fringe of space, it could then act more or less as a glider. It could then come back and intersect with the upper layers of the atmosphere and then use them like a pebble skipping on a, on a lake. A pilot would fly the plane along the edge of the Earth's atmosphere, traveling at 13,500 miles an hour. It would circuit the Earth in two hours. It could drop its lethal payload on any city in the world. Although the Germans had no nuclear bomb capability, they planned to use a bomb that would spread radioactive particles into the atmosphere. The bomb carried by the Sanger bomber would have, would have been a 5,000 pound high explosive bomb wrapped with blankets of radioactive silica. The device would be dropped at about 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet above the city, it would explode. The radioactive silica would fall like snowflakes. And the end result would be uh, radioactive sickness and death. Having dropped its deadly payload, the space bomber would glide back to Germany, gradually re-entering Earth's atmosphere. The landing part, where it's in essence gliding down to Earth without any power, is very much like the shuttle. The difference between the antipodal bomber and the modern shuttle is that the shuttle doesn't have engines, and the antipodal bomber did. This was clearly a revolutionary weapon, which really could change the course of the war. Goering immediately set Sanger up in his own research base in northern Germany with instructions to develop the antipodal bomber.